What's up, guys? Oh my gosh, what a voice crack. Welcome, everyone, back to Hope Harbor Zoo. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful day so far. My name is Leaf, and it's so great to have you guys back here for another episode. Oh my gosh, I know, so crazy. You know, it's so surreal to think that you can have a series on YouTube with a video that comes out for it, that, like, you know, the very next day. Isn't that wild? Um, I don't know where I'm getting at over here. <laughs> Welcome, guys. So, today... We are continuing work on our South America section. Currently, if you guys do catch some quick glimpses in this video, you are able to see kind of like some of the other things I've been building for this area. Uh, mainly our South America house. We do have a speed build kind of like in the progress. Uh, hopefully, I can get that all out in one episode. If it's not too long, because I've been working on that son of a devil like it's no tomorrow. But listen, if not, we could just split it up into a few different episodes. I don't really mind. And I think you guys would enjoy to hear me kind of go insane. Uh, especially with, like, you know, Hope Harbor, updating mods, uh, just general life crises, all the all great things. Uh, but still, we should probably talk about what we're doing here today instead of going insane. Today, we are building our Guanac and Rhea habitat. Yes, I finally have Rhea's. Isn't that crazy? But no, that is exactly what's on the menu today. It's creating this beautiful, kind of very open plains habitat based for Rhea and Guanaco. Both very, very underrated creatures, which I feel like don't get enough love. In case if you guys are not aware, the Guanaco is easily one of my favorite camelids. Uh, it is originally what llamas were domesticated from. So it's very interesting to see how these guys were actually able to still survive in the wild, unlike their other camelid brother, kind of like the dromedary. If, in case of you guys don't know, dromedaries were, well, all dromedaries are domestic uh, camels, uh, and there are no longer any wild dromedary camels, which is very crazy to think about. I know you guys probably see like those images of like, you know, the camels in the desert all alone. That's kind of made up because those are, of course, domesticated. I know it's very crazy to think about. There's a whole scientific study done on like, there's several scientific studies, let's be completely honest. It's just so cool. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry I'm rambling over here, but it's just so wild how like, Guanacos and llamas are still able to coexist within the same world. And that's why I'm like, absolutely blown away by them. Uh, guanacos are, of course, not as fluffy as, you know, your common llama, but they do have a very high fur quality, wool quality, uh, so they are very much sought out for their very, very, very soft wool. Uh, vicuñas, which are the alpaca version of the guanaco, are actually, like, the softest ones, so their wool is prized even greatly greater i guess but unfortunately vicuñas are only held in one place in the united states which is right next to my house oh my gosh isn't that crazy so unfortunately we probably are not able to get them in zsu so that's a little bit of a shame would have loved to have had all camelids but that's fine i'm not really i'm not really too worried but we also have the Rhea in here. I spent about three minutes talking about Guanacos. Isn't that friggin' awesome? The Rhea is also a ratite. These guys are really awesome. You guys may know your cassowaries and your emus. The Rhea often gets very forgotten about. And don't even start to bring up kiwis right here. Kiwis aren't real ratites in my eyes. Everything that I say is gospel now. But still, I'm, I digress. I'm sorry, guys. I'm being a little silly today. But still, Rhea's are very much often forgotten about. There are only two species of Rhea. There's Darwin's and there's the Greater Rhea. Uh, the Darwin's is also known as the Lesser Rhea, by the way. Uh, they're not lesser in my eyes. Both are equally beautiful. Uh, but no, they're ratites. They're very much related to emus and ostrich and moas, which are now extinct. Unfortunately, almost said fortunately there, but yeah, they're just wicked cool. You could kind of see them pop up in the speed world, like right there. They're incredibly beautiful. They have this beautiful blue slate, kind of grayish, kind of feathers, and the males have like this kind of like black marking on the front of them when they are in like the mating season and stuff like that. It really is so cool just to see how dynamic they get, like their coats and their patterns and like all that stuff. It really is crazy to think about, but no, they are really awesome and they are farmed so i'm sure you guys probably know the uh rescue ranger ranch or whatever i i honestly forget about it i think that's chippendale 
Oh, no, I'm kind of losing it right now. Urban Rescue Ranch, that's exactly what it is. So if you guys aren't familiar with it, just go check it out. You guys get to learn all about how kind and nurturing and totally not misbehaved Rayos are. It's really great. But still, that honestly made me fall in love with these creatures even more because they are just so cool and they're not really that well known about. And I'm just so happy whenever, like, you know, kind of channels like Urban Rescue Ranch start to give, like, these relatively unknown animals a lot more recognition and a lot more love. Same goes for, like, you know, how he was able to, like, popularize possums and stuff like that that's really great over there but still those are the two animals that we're building for right in here and we should probably talk about what their habitat is kind of based off of it is currently based off of kind of like the patagonian deserts and scrublands that you oftentimes see in argentina and chile uh this is something i really wanted to do as like a nice big vista in here especially since now we do have the space to achieve this look um and in case if you guys are unfamiliar, about this habitat was the size of Hope Harbor. I'm kidding, of course. No, of Hope Island. I'm kidding, of course, but come on, we were kind of restrained over there. So I'm finally using this opportunity to build some larger habitats. In case if I don't like them later down the line, I could always shrink them. I could always change them out for different animals. Also building the housing for these guys right here as well. Just wanted to make sure that these guys had a nice little happy area to live in. And you know what? It looks pretty damn good in the end. Um, I'm kind of going... Oh my gosh, here comes the yawn. Okay. Wow, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't make you guys yawn. Um, but, <laughs> I, but still, going around throughout here, you guys can probably infer that I'm kind of using like the same architecture over and over again for the main holding areas. Uh, that's because we're really spending most of the money and the budget on the actual enclosures. And so we're not really making any fancy holding areas. We have to keep it relatively basic in order to kind of like, you know, balance out our budget. I don't really like where I put that door. I think I got to fix that later down the line. It's kind of like off to the angle. And I was like, you know what? Maybe this could be kind of neat. But in on all honesty, doesn't really look all that good but we do kind of cover it up with a nice little kind of canopy right there i don't know i really don't know what i'm doing anymore but also adding a lot more grass throughout here as well because it did feel relatively dead and i don't know i see big open plains of like you know dirt and like kind of mix in with grass and i'm like Oh my god, I gotta put some pieces down there. I gotta give my PC a hard time. So that's kind of what I try and do sometimes. It's just really just fill it up with a lot more grass. Obviously, Rayas and Guanacos would kind of tear up the grass in here. But still, for uh, lore sake, uh, we have indestructible grass. It's all plastic, probably. I don't know. That'd probably be really awful for the animals. Okay, it's probably not plastic in that case. But what we do add is a few more faux rocks throughout here. You guys remember me saying this in the last episode, but combining these with the faux rock pack on Nexus is so incredible, and it really does help give it a nice effect. And speaking of nice effect, that's kind of why I designed this habitat. You can start to see like some of the beautiful vistas that are starting to come into play right there. Also, sorry about like the sun jump cut. I didn't realize we were all done and like onto the B-roll. But still, thank you guys so much for watching. It always is such a pleasure. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Hope you guys are enjoying CSU. I think by this time, CSU International should be all done. Um, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, it should probably be out. But still, hope you guys are excited for all that jazz. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Hope you guys... Yeah, okay. I gotta leave. Goodbye. Have a great one. Peace. Bye.